Hello everybody, this is September and I'm checking in from the Hanover server today. In this video I'm going to be discussing crafting, but more specifically reforging and the WISP system that is currently in game. If you're watching this video in Arc Age version 3.5 or beyond, this likely will no longer apply. Additionally, I hope to answer the question, how does somebody make money crafting weapons, armor, or jewelry? Before getting too far, we need, actually need to know a couple things. Uh, first, we need to know the skill requirements to use salvage forges and to craft different grades of items at the uh, workbenches. Up in the left-hand side, you'll see that to use a salvage forge, um, we'll, which we'll talk more about here in a minute, or to craft any tier of item, uh, you're required to have a, the following skills. Illustrious, you need a, a 1K proficiency, Magnificent 2K, Ethereum 40K, Delphinon 70K, and finally Ionad, which is 130K. It doesn't matter which workbench you use, whether it's the Regal Bench, the Basic Bench, or even an Armor House or a Salvage Forge. It is the same across the board. You can actually modify your skills using certain buffs like... Uh, the hero statue in hero hall is plus two two k proficiency um there's also the dawn's drop armor which at the max level will give you plus 20k and then there are also various items that you can craft and put in your house that will boost your skills up to another 20k and there's also some other rare items like the uh, costume from the misogons uh hidden crate which is that prestige item it can drop a costume that gives you plus 10k to every proficiency and that is for the costume slot but barring those types of items there actually may be more that i can't really think of off the top of my head um, if you don't have those skills you're going to have to grind up the required skill level or work with a trusted person to help you progress through the grades of items Okay, so let's move on. The, the first thing I want to address is the Mana Wisp system. As you may already know, every crafted item, illustrious or above, when you salvage it with a even stone, it will grant you Mana Wisp and a token amount of Archeum. With the exception being Obsidian Weapons and Armor, which we're not even going to discuss in this video. So the question is, how many Wisps do you get for any specific item? And another question you may have is, do I get more Wisp if I salvage a higher grade item like a Celestial or Unique? The answer to the first question, how many Wisp do I get for X item, is well, it varies. I made a spreadsheet that uh, we can take a look at and you can also download it for your personal use. There's gonna be a link in the video description. So if we're looking just at the armor items here, you'll see this first table shows each body slot. Um, what I mean by that is, i.e. the head means hood for cloth, cap for leather, or helm for plate. In this case, it just doesn't matter which type of armor we're talking about, whether it's cloth, leather, or plate, only the slot that it goes in, or the body part, if you will. As you can see here, a headpiece at Illustri Illustrious will pay you two or three mana wisps when you salvage it with an even stone. If you aren't familiar with even stones, even stones are available from the general vendor for 10 silver. And salvaging any item with an even stone takes 10 labor points and it uses the masonry skill proficiency. Uh, continuing on, Magnificent will be 5, Ethereum will be 15, Delphinod will be 75, and for whatever reason, if you decide to salvage an Ionad, um, uh, Ionad headpiece will pay about 438 Wisp. You can look through this table at your leisure. As you can see, all the armor, armor types um, are not created equal. Uh, the best Wisp giving items is the chest piece, then followed by the legs. The second question, do you get more Wisp for higher grade items? The answer to that is no, you do not. It doesn't matter what grade of item you salvage, you will always get the same amount of Wisp indicated here on the spreadsheet. However, the higher grade items can pay you more in Archeum. However, we generally don't salvage crafted items just for the Archeum. 
So I don't feel like salvaging a bunch of crafted items warranted any test time here in this video. You, however, can personally run a mini test on the Archeum salvaging system by buying um, a bunch of the uh, mob type dropped items. Um, the ones that drop off the mobs, they can be any grade from grand to unique. And if you run those tests, you will find that the higher grade items grant more Archeum when you salvage them. It's the exact same thing that happens with the crafted armor. But again, we mainly salvage these items for the Wisp. So let's move on. The next part of the Wisp, Wisp system is reforging. That is, you can turn your Wisp into new crafted items using salvage forges. There are three types of salvage forges. There's one type per category, the categories being armor, weapons, and accessories. You can craft personal salvage, salvage forges for your home, um, but they are a tad expensive and the bulk of the cost coming from a material that is required, which is the Thunderstruck tree. But there are also public salvage forges and those are located in capital cities like Marianople, Osteria, and Growlgate. And additionally, most servers have um, some pretty nice folks that have their homes or pavilions set to public. And if they happen to have those forges in there, you can use them. So this, the next table here in the spreadsheet shows the cost to reforge your wisp into a specific item. Again, reforge. For example, like the headpiece that we talked about earlier, to make one of those at Illustrious is going to cost you seven wisp. Um, Magnificent 15, Ethereum 69, and Delphina 225. And finally, if uh, money is no object to you, you can straight up craft to Ionad for 1750 Wisp. And uh, you'll also need an Ionad scroll to do that, to, to reforge to that. Uh, I don't recommend doing that. We'll discuss that more here in a little bit. But as you can see in this table, just like salvaging, the armor pieces all require a various amount of wisp depending on the slot type. Again, the most expensive being the chest followed by the legs. So with those first two tables, you should understand the basics of salvaging and how reforging would work. As you can see here, there is a crap ton of more tables here on this spreadsheet. And there's actually a very good reason for that. In the beginning of this video, I hope to answer the question, how does anybody make money being a crafter? Well, that is where we have to actually dive into all these other tables. Now, if you're the kind of person that don't care to look much at spreadsheets, or you don't care too much about the technical side of crafting, you, you probably should just stop watching this video now. Um, you have a good understanding of the basics. However, for those of you who want to learn more about the nuances of crafting, I'm going to dive into these additional tables and answer the question, how do you make money crafting? This will actually also serve a, another purpose, which is giving you a point of reference. If you would like to download this spreadsheet, you'll be able to understand why I made these tables and how you can further use them on your own. Okay, so the next two tables are labeled cost to craft cloth to next tier at armor house and cost to craft cloth to next tier at cloth bench. I actually did this to show you why it usually makes more sense to craft an craft at an armor smith house workbench versus the standard regal workbenches. If you look at the cost uh, to craft in the first table, you'll see that they are actually lower than the cost in the second table. Not by a whole lot, but every little bit counts. What is more is if you plan on craft being a crafter, you'll want to save every gold coin you can to maximize profit. Okay, the next table here on the right is a snapshot of the current and fair market values of items that can go into crafting the cloth items and these values are taken from my server 
which is North America Legacy Hanor. You'll see everything that's listed here may be required to upgrade a particular cloth piece. Um, this table is actually one that uh, you can change the values in and the other tables will update accordingly. I did this so anybody that's like on the Fresh Start servers, the EU servers are playing from an alternate universe, you can freely change those values to get accurate data for wherever you are. So for example, if I change this Moonlight Essence and say, oh, it's worth 25 gold on my server, I could change it and you could see that the tables on the left actually update as you see here. Okay, so the last table here in the cloth section is showing how much gold it would cost you if you were to reforge using the reforge station to a particular, particular level. Uh, for example, like the heads, hands, and feet armor types, um, we take the amount of wisp required multiplied by the value of wisp. So for illustrious, we see that they take seven wisp to reforge to which means that the cost would be 7 times 20, 20 being the value of a cloth wisp, which gives us a value of 140, and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, explanatory, so on, so on throughout this table. Okay, scrolling down to the next section, we come across the leather section, and uh, these tables work exactly like the cloth tables did. Uh, but you'll notice that I didn't actually add in the cost to craft via the normal workbench as we should have already determined that the Armorsmith house is usually the best avenue for crafting. And once again, uh, the table in the left hand labeled leather material values shows the items that may be needed to craft a particular grade of an item. And those values again were pulled from my server uh, Legacy North America Hanor. Um, those values, again, can freely be changed so you can uh, accurately see what you're dealing with on your individual server. And then scrolling down a tad more, you'll see the values for plate armor. Again, they work just as they do in the cloth and the leather sections do above. Next, we're going to go ahead and switch tabs to the weapons tab. And this should look somewhat familiar if you had a chance to familiar familiarize yourself with the armor tab, you'll notice that the wisp values and reforge values in this category is uh, pretty much simplified. Really that is because there's not any type of variance like we have in armor, uh, where something like a chest piece is more valuable than, for example, a sash. A weapon is a weapon, which makes this data pretty easy. And finally, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, Jewelry tab, and you'll see this is actually a very simple layout as well. Um, there's really only two different types of jewelry. Rings and earrings, they kind of work the same, and the neck or the necklace is kind of in its own category. There's actually one interesting thing here in this tab, which is the Wisp cost to reforge straight to Ethereum is only 18. Interesting. And since if you reforge using the reforging station, you are guaranteed a upgradable item at Ethereum. The cost to make a Delphinaut is only the Wisp cost plus the upgrade cost, which we have the data here. So that would be the cost to reforge at a workbench, which is 324 gold. That is the WISP value. And then the upgrade cost from Ethereum to Delphinod, which is 189 gold uh, for the rings and the earrings, gives you a total cost to craft a Delphinod item of only 513 gold. Which is why, if you happen to be wondering why, ever since 3.0, the prices of Delphinod and to a lesser degree, Ionad jewelry items is way down, this is your answer. What is more, given the 513 gold cost to make a Delphinod item, and even if you get a crappy item like um, a meadow earring, you can simply reforge it and still be ahead in gold giving, given the amount of wisp that you get, uh, which is 30. 
And if they have a gold value of 18 gold each, you're still going to be ahead in the gold amount by about 27 gold. Okay, so we're almost to the end here, but I do want to finish the subject about how to make money while crafting. Um, we already, we just took a look at how jewelry can be profitable, but let's look at something else like tailoring. Um, I'm going to choose tailoring for this example, but it doesn't really matter which profession you want to talk about. The key to making money is to understand how much each item costs and the most efficient way to get to the goal that you want. And then when you sell any item, you price it accordingly. Of course, not everything that you craft is going to lead to profit. But knowing the cost and being efficient is the key. To that end, I am going to use the data in this spreadsheet to show you some examples of how you too can use this data to make the most from Okay, so in this first example, I'm going to set a imaginary goal of to craft a Ethereum chess piece. Now, why would anybody want to craft an Ethereum chess piece? Well, there's actually a couple reasons. The first being that if I needed to make a Celestial No Break Shards, I would actually need two Ethereum chess pieces. And second, if I had an alt, perhaps, that I wanted to make a decent set of armor for, maybe not a great set of armor, um, Ethereum wouldn't be that bad of a set. Okay, so let's take a look. If I switch over to this other armor tab, um, I can see that there's two easy options to craft to Ethereum. Um, the first one, which should be very obvious, is just to reforge um, 111 wisp and I would get an Ethereum. But we can actually see right away that that cost is going to be 2,220 gold. And also, because we're reforging straight to Ethereum, that's going to be an upgradable version uh, of Ethereum. So I don't really want to do that. The second option would be to reforge to Ma Magnificent then upgrade to Ethereum using an Armor House workbench. And with a quick glance, I can actually see that that would be a cheaper option. Um, just the You just take the cost to reforge plus the cost to upgrade, and that's, I mean, quite obviously less than 2,200 gold. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to the Armor Cost tab here, and we'll take a look at how that breaks down. Okay, so here we see that the wisp required to make a magnificent is 24. The value of those wisp currently is 480 gold for all of them. And the cost to upgrade is only 184 gold. That gives me a total for this goal of only 665 gold. What's more is if I happen to get lucky and that Ethereum that I craft at the uh, Armor House workbench goes to an upgradable version, I can actually parlay that into some profit. But if not, it's okay, I still have reached my goal. Okay, so in this ex second example, I'm showing you uh, three possible paths to get the end goal of crafting a Delphinod chess piece. So the first option would be to reforge to Illustrious and then upgrade it all the way to Delphinod. Now to get the exact numbers on how that actually would work and we want to do math here, um, we need to know a couple things. What is the chance of getting an upgradable version? And then how many would it take to reach the end goal of one Delphinod? So we do know if you look at any sealed version of any item, you'll see that there are seven different versions of each grade or each level, uh, illustrious, magnificent, ethereum, whatever. Only one of which is upgradable. That tells me to get to the goal of one Delphinod, I'm going to need seven ethereum. And to get to seven ethereum, I'm going to need 49 magnificent. So that is what this first line here looks at. Um, we're taking a look at going from illustrious to Delphinod. So we need to craft 49 Magnificents 
And that's going to cost us 588 wisps, which is a crazy cost of 11,760 gold. Uh, then we have to upgrade all 49 of those Magnificents to Ethereum. Uh, I'm sorry, all 49 of those uh, Illustriouses to Magnificent, uh, which is going to cost us another 6.2K-ish gold. And then we should have seven that will be able to upgrade to Ethereum, which is going to cost us another 1,293 gold. And finally, one of those seven Ethereums will be upgradable to Delphinod, which this table tells me that's going to cost me 1,430 gold, which gives us a total of using the illustrious to Delphinod method of uh, 21,000 gold. That doesn't really seem like a good option. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Okay, so what if we actually started at Mag Magnificent? That's what this second line looks at. Um, we would actually only have to uh, make uh, seven Ethereums to get the one Delphinod. So we're upgrading to Magnificent. Those are all upgradable to Ethereum. Or, I'm sorry, we're reforging uh, straight to Magnificent, which means they're all upgradable. So we only need seven of those. So seven Ethereums to get one Delphinod. So running the numbers again, it looks like it's going to be 168 Wisp, which is going to cost us 3,360 uh, 3, gold. And then seven upgrades to Ethereum, costing us another 1,293 gold. And finally, the last upgrade to Delphinod, which is 1,430 gold, giving us a total cost of 6,084 gold. Now, finally... What if we just reforge straight to Ethereum? And that does, uh, that's the third line here, that actually does look like it is a much cheaper option. Um, being that we only need a, uh, 111 Wisp, which only costs us 2200 gold, and then we're going to have to throw in another 1430 gold to upgrade it to Delphinod, and we're done. Boom. Total cost 3650 gold. Okay, so based only on that data there, it does seem like the way to go would be to reforge straight to Ethereum. But we're actually forgetting about something. What about all those other items that we crafted using the other methods that we didn't actually use? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that information. I'm going to unhide these rows here. And using the data from the reforge to illustrious method, we see that we would actually end up with an additional 42 magnificent chess pieces left over and an additional six ethereums left over. We could um, do whatever we want with those. We could try to sell them. I know most servers you can't sell anything that's magnificent. Very few servers anybody will buy anything that's ethereum. But, you know, you can look at the, the gold values of what you got in it to see if what you would have to sell the Ethereum for. But let's just say we converted them all back to Wisp, um, which would actually give us a return value of 6,720 gold. Making the illustrious to Delphinod method only cost us 14K gold. That's still pretty horrible, but it wasn't as bad as it looked before. Now, look what happens when we do the same thing for the reforging straight to the magnificent method. It turns out that we'd actually get 2,880 gold back in Wisp, which means the adjusted value for that one Delphinod starting out at magnificent is only 3,204 gold for that Dolphinod. Wow. Ta-da! We actually just figured out the best way to craft a Dolphinod chess piece is to start at Magnificent. Okay, this is a, a, kind of a long video, but I encourage you to run the test um, just like I did with your numbers so you can find the best way to craft whatever item you want. Doesn't matter what it is, weapon, jewelry, plate, it doesn't matter. Um, 
this this spreadsheet should give you all the information you need now it's just a matter of figuring out what what is the best method I will tell you you know I will save you a little bit of time and say from my personal experience it usually comes out the same meaning that it's usually the best method is to craft uh, or reforge straight to magnificent um, then upgrade to whatever but I encourage you to run these numbers and if there's any other crafters watching this please share your advice in the comment section below and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for people that are giving helpful advice and I personally will be giving you a thumbs up to try to keep your comments on the top so on this spreadsheet uh, there's another example of me setting a goal to craft an Ionad chess piece this video has already ran much longer than I wanted it to um, and most longer than most people would actually like so I'm gonna go ahead and let you examine that example on your own alrighty then there you have it uh, we have taken a look at salvaging reforging and crafting for profit additionally this spreadsheet is going to be avail available to you in the video description and you can run your own numbers there and hopefully it will help you uh, become a efficient and profitable crafter if you have found this video helpful even in the slightest bit you can show your support for my efforts by hitting the like and subscribe buttons additionally you can support me on twitch twitter and patreon until next time september saying be well